Hello, Americans. This is Orson Welles. I want you, please, to make a picture in your mind. We're high in the mountains, in the solemn loveliness of the very crest of our planet. Below us are two oceans and two poles. We can see, as in a moment of time, all the nations of our hemisphere. We're standing at the foot of a great monument, the image of him who died proclaiming the brotherhood of man. Imagine the Christ of the Andes. That's the way I'd like to start this broadcast. That picture. And all of us thinking about it. I've asked some people to the studio tonight, and they've been kind enough to come. I'd like you to meet them. First, we'll let the lady come first. Your name, please? Mrs. Walter Jones. Your occupation? I'm a housewife. Doesn't seem like an occupation, but believe me, it is. Sure it is, Mrs. Jones. Next. I'm Mr. Bowers. I'm a salesman. How do you do? I sell brushes. How do you do? Not only hair brushes, but floor brushes, too. Let's say, I don't get this. What kind of a show is this? And your name, please, an occupation. I'm a truck driver. My truck's waiting downstairs on the street, and my wife's waiting at home. Well, I won't keep you long, Mr. Probus. Uh, Nick Probus. Thank you. I've invited you here, the three of you, in order to ask you some questions. Hey, I'm your man, Mr. Wells. Now, I- I'd like to take names of ball players. I'd huh? like dates in American history, if possible. Uh, uh, how about actors and actresses for my I'm choice? I'm very sorry to disappoint you, all of you, but our question for tonight has to do with some mountains. What are the Rocky Mountains of South America? The equivalent to the Rockies. Uh, no coaching for the audience, please. You, sir? Uh, uh, the Andes? That's absolutely correct. Mrs. Jones, what do you know about the Andes Mountains? Um... It's very hot down there, I believe. A tropical jungle, most Some of them. Some of the Andes are in jungle. Some are snow-covered. Uh, oh, yes. Most of us aren't very good at South American geography. I know I didn't know anything about it at all until I went down there. How about you, sir? Well, uh... uh well, as you say, there's the Andes Mountains. That's right. Uh, then there's the Amazon. Right. Several big rivers. And uh, the countries are Brazil, Argentina, Chile, uh... Uh, Argentina. A couple of more, I think. Mr. Provost? Well, uh, oh, that's where Carmen Miranda comes from, South America. <laughs> she certainly does. Now about the Andes. Mr. Wells, excuse me. Yes, it'll go. Oh, hello. I haven't seen you since Columbus Day. Oh, Mr. Wells. I know some things about the Andes. All right, go ahead. The Andes is a mountain system which forms a continuous chain along the western coast of South America. It is over 4,000 miles long and in some parts 100 miles wide. Its average height is 13,000 feet. And there are big birds called condors which can fly over the Andes without stopping once. Thank you, little girl. That helps a little, but... Just uh... in time. I've come just in time. Howdy, Mr. Wells. Uh, who are you? I'm the man with the facts. Can't start anything without knowing the facts. Facts, figures, there's the key to knowledge. Take away the facts and civilization goes to peace. That's very interesting, but I'm afraid... Andes, did you say? Two principal chains. Eastern chains called the Andes. Western chains called the Cordilleras. The Andes are longer, higher, wider than the Rockies. The islands of Tierra del Fuego at Cape Horn are also part of the Andes, coming up from underwater. Lakes? South America's full of lakes, most of them in the Andes. Titicaca, only one of its kind. 12,545 feet above sea level. Volcanoes, highest active volcanoes in the world. There's facts for you. Thank you very much. Lamas del Paltas. Andes, the only place in the world you can find One billion five hundred million dollars worth of silver have come out of the Potosí mines in the Andes. Well, I must run along and catch another program. Great demand for facts these days. Here's my card. So long. Well, we got some facts all right, but do facts tell the story? How do we best tell it? By anecdote? By heroes? By legend? Is there a chain that binds this scattered history together? The Andes. Not only mountains. On these towering hills, kingdoms and empires live. And here both tyrant and liberator planted their flag. Was there ever a name with such stride? Conquistadores, men from the east with the pull of history in their blood. The Spaniard, the horseman, the assassin, carrying Christ on his sword. Pizarro, conquistador. Pizarro, the man, the mortal, daring the giant Andes of Peru. His army, a few hundred men, shining in armor. He faced the mountain, shouting, Swing open! Swing open! 
for the Spaniards have come. Let us through. This is our century. Aye, so we've come. And what will remain of us? This arrow leads us to our death. Gold? Who sees gold? I see nothing but air. The same as in Panama. Oh, so you are conquistadores, eh? Your comrades have smashed the head of Mexico. They hold Tenochtitlan. And here you stand, wailing like women. Guard your tongue, Hernando. Or your sword shall answer for it. My sword is ready. Aye, here is mine. Oh, Pissarro. What does this mean, Hernando? We are tired, Pissarro. We cannot eat our horses forever. Here is my sword, and with it I draw a line on the ground. Ahead, over the Andes, lies Peru and riches. Behind Panama is poverty. Choose each man what best becomes a brave Castilian. Is our blood so pale and thin we talk of home? Shall we be laughed at in Panama? I should rather my bones be picked at by eagles. For my part, I go to the south. To the south, the Incas, the Indians, children of the sun, the Incas, high in their Andes, safe in the Cordilleras, the heaven ascending hills, safe in their temples and gardens, safe they thought, they dwelt on a mountain of silver and gold in their simple houses, workers in stone and metal, the Incas, artisans, craftsmen, road builders, builders of huge gateways and pillars of stone hewn from quarries, set by hand, and four centuries have not pulled them down. While Pizarro marched southward, master of the mountains, Conquistador. Until from a great height, the green land lay below, gateway to treasure, in this year, 1532. Hernando, what have we left? 72 horses and two cannon. 150 men. While to the south, at Cajamarca, the chief of all the Incas, tall warrior Atahualpa, stood in the door of the great temple. And in his eyes, the sun was going down. They are almost at the city. Do you hear, great Atahualpa? I hear. Perhaps they are the white children of the sun who return after many wanderings. As it is said in the prophecy, why should we fear them? We are too great a people. Pizarro, their garrisons are everywhere, and they outnumber us a thousand, ten thousand to one. We will not strike at the body, but at the heart. We capture Atahualpa. Atahualpa. I am no coward, but such a plan is madness. Then we shall be mad. There is enough wealth here. But in water, we could drown the very seas. We shall take Atahualpa. And the Spaniard knife at his throat will teach him more than all his temples. A hundred men were enough for it. A handful... A hundred men, mortal as sin, and two cannon. Dragons bearing gods. Gods bearing thunder. Butchers on horseback. So fell the Inca. God Inca. Mountain Pharaoh. Heir to the sun with his empire. 
Cities were set to the torch. The Andes glowed with the fires of carnage. Cusco, the holy city, blazing. Who will stand and cry out? There was Greece and Rome after. And in Mexico, the great Montezuma learned to die. So Atahualpa, all gods go down. The dust settles. The dead are buried. Now what else did that guy do beside breaking into the treasury? Conquered the Andes. For many years ruled for the Spanish crown over almost one-third of the South American continent. It's a long time back, of course. Nowadays, he doesn't look very well. You can take my word for it. I've just seen him. I beg pardon? Bizarre? The same. I've just been to visit him in Lima, the city of the king. Oh, what do you have to say for himself? Nothing. Nothing at all. He just lay there in his glass case in the cathedral. You see, he's a mummy, like King Tut. Has been over 300 years. He's as dead as you can get. What got him, old age? No, he was murdered by some of his own men. Well, it's like a gangster story. That's one way of looking at it. There were a lot of murders from then on. Kings of Spain ruled the Andes from Spain. All the way up to the last century, the men of the Incas and their conquerors lived in a black night of murder and feud. But day drew near. The beam of light swung from the north. While Peru kneeled, blood stained the snow at Valley Forge. 1776. The year cast in bronze. Like a bell tolling the landscape. The year ringing out over continents. And the word freedom sped down the meridians, down the paths of wind and water. The word was passed along like a coin. A bright thing. A hope. And all hands touching the coin became hard, coiled into a fist, waiting for the day of power. A shot heard round the world. The wooden bridge it conquered, spanning seas and linking men in the courage of freedom. And they heard that shot in South America. I know what came next, Mr. Well. Yes, little girl? The Liberators. A uh, Bolivar, San Martin, O'Higgins... The Liberators. Before them was Tupac Amaru, the Indian, who raised a mountain army of 40,000 to throw off the Spaniards. After his capture, they pulled out his tongue, bound him to a stake, and forced him to watch while his wife and son and kinsmen were pulled apart by horses driven in different directions. Then he himself was killed by torture. Then there was a dream of an American Republic for the Indians. The Latin revolutionary Miranda, who fought for Washington and then in France, found this scheme in a book and gave it to an English statesman who hated Spain. So William Pitt read it carefully. And when he closed the green Morocco covers, he is said merely to have smiled. But the shot heard round the world still echoed after a quarter of a century still hummed in the ears of man. The tyrants were fearful. They visited Spain more often for the raising of armies and for polite conversation. We shall have to take firmer steps in Venezuela. We must not allow news of the United States to reach the people. A larger army must be brought over. Or else we're not safe. Well, believe us, stay. I was about to leave. The air is foul here. Oh, I shall have the windows open. I'm afraid it is not the windows. Bolivar, Simon Bolivar, the liberator, young. He'd read the books Spain banned in South America, books from North America and France. And he had the mind and heart for what he read. Handsome, very rich, with everything to lose. Look, look into the heart of man, Simon, and not. His first. So his tutor told him. And Bolivar listened. Look into the heart of man, Simon. Do not investigate his blood, but see him as a man. Look at truth directly with your eyes. 
though it be blind. And Bolivar looked, and the truth was blinding. Yes, and terrible. The truth was heard in the street. Down with tyranny! Come out of your house in your grande old Spain. Come out! Come out! You can go in again without your head. Our day is on the calendar, senor. Our day will come like a wave. I vow to dedicate my life to the emancipation of my country. Hear me, sky. Believe me. You are my witness. I swear South America shall one day be free. Hesitate us to perish. We've decided to be free. We must act. We must conquer or die, and we will conquer. For heaven does not want us in chains. And there came a time when the liberator had more to fear from the elements than the armies of the king. Spain has retaken the most of all we've won. We must surprise it back. We will march on them now by the Andes. Andes? As my general, it's a rainy season. In some parts, the mountains are impassable. Where a goat can pass, so can an army. Pizarro once crossed the Andes with a flag of tyranny. And I shall cross them for freedom. Here's the story of that march across the Andes by a man who was there, Bolivar's own adjutant. First sight of the wonderful mountains caused astonishment and fear among our Indian troops. Their wonder grew at every climb. But the summit they believed the highest was always the first stage of a yet higher one. Till in the end, the highest of all was separated from earth by cloud and mist. These men accustomed on their plains to cross torrential rivers, to tame wild horses, to fight the buffalo, the crocodile, and the tiger with their naked bodies, were terrified by the alien scenery. The mules carrying arms and munitions collapsed under the weight. Not many horses survived the fifth day. The carcasses abandoned by the advance guard blocked the way of those following. Day and night rain poured down. With the altitude, the cold became more rigorous. Pissarro crossed the lower Andes, yes. But this, this daring of a boy surpassed all. They climbed the craggy gorges higher and higher and the mist of earth seemed to fall away and higher yet past the timber line past the last green areas into the thinning air and below the eagle soared and would not follow. High. High into the cold murderous air which could kill a man leave the candle burning. At four places, the way was completely blocked by huge boulders and fallen trees or undermined by the incessant rain. The men who had been given rations of raw meat for four days threw them away because they could hardly carry their rifles on the steep slopes. At that time, the last horses fell. Higher. Higher into the region of ice, into the silence, where the sky pressed upon their shoulders, and men died. Wagons went over the sheer cliffs, but the army marched, with feet bleeding, with hunger at their side. The army marched. The sides of a mountain would tumble down. The earth would open and pull them under to a white death. Very late at night, the army bivouacked at the foot of Mount Pisba, at nearly 13,000 feet. Terrible night. The men were in rags, 
and hail and icy wind put out the fires they attempted to light. For death came quietly at night, stopping the heartbeat with its icy hand, twisting the limbs into terrible shapes, picking men off as they stumbled or went mad with snow blindness. The next day, the troops crossed the plateau. Men fell marching, and many died. Some of them succeeded in restoring some warmth to their half-frozen bodies by beating themselves. That day, I noticed a group of men not far from where I was sitting, exhausted. To my question, one replied that the wife of a man in the rifle battalion, for a large number of women had come with us, was in labor. The next morning, I saw the woman marching on with the rear guard of the battalion, her newborn babe in her arms. Pizarro, can your dead bones rise? Can your glory match this glory? Does any man dare to surpass the height and heroism of a conquistador? Yes. You are far below now, Pizarro. You are tumbled from the sky forever. The democratic man climbs the Andes and he passes your pinnacles. He shouts across the centuries. Hello! Bolivar, they are gone. We are losing ten men a day, twenty. The wagons cannot follow. Then we'll leave the wagons behind. We must get through. If I die, it will be in battle, not here. I have made a vow and I shall keep it. This was another Valley Forge. And here on this height, history binds two events and makes them one. Later, ragged and torn, these same men went into battle on the plains with the frost still on their lips. And uh, what happened? Who won? I know. You tell us about it. He was outnumbered almost two to one. And after all that marching, he still won the battle. And then what? Then there were more battles. And finally, in 18, uh, 1820, the first constitution was drawn up for Venezuela, Ecuador, and Colombia, based on the Constitution of the United States of America. Oh, and Mr. Wells, we forgot San Martin. Jose de San Martin, liberator of Argentina. de San Martin. Before Simon Bolivar, he crossed the Andes with an army. The Army of the Andes, that was the official title. They crossed the Cordilleras over the passes of La Ramada and the Planchon and the Portillo. 4,000 men in 24 days descending the plains of Chile into the Aconcagua Valley. And there on the slope of Chacabuco, the Andes rang with the clash of sabers and the Spaniard was smashed in Chile. Don Jose de San Martin. General. He was a man who was last to drink when the army came to water. On the 9th of December in the year 1824, the Battle of Ayacucho ended, and after 14 years, the War of Independence of Latin America ended. The Andes were quiet once again. Only the voice of Simon Bolivar rang over them. It is necessary that ours be a society of sister nations, strongly and powerfully united a political body of all our republics. I desire to see the formation in America of the greatest nation in the world, not so much as to its extension and wealth, as to its glory and freedom. Here was a vision of the future. Bolivar saw the centuries unfold and the peace to come. He saw the strength of the Americas and its common destiny. Yes, the blood on the Andes was washed away. But there were men who dreamed of new bloodshed. It's a very risky matter, Santander. To kill a man is a simple thing. But Bolivar... So, who is Bolivar? He can die as well as any man. He has too many great ideas. He has appointed you minister. And he was a fool. We shall ambush him at the palace. Our cry will be, death to the tyrant. Santander used the trick repeated by all tyrants. Say you battle for freedom... And kill freedom. Death to the tyrant. General Santander, you are under arrest in the name of the Republic. 
Oliver escaped with his life. So the history books tell us. I have really been murdered. The daggers have entered my heart. Is this the reward? How have I offended freedom? Oh! Santander is ready. Santander? I have changed the penalty to banishment. You do not wish to see me die? How will it end, Santander? If I kill you, you will perhaps be avenged. And then I, in turn, will be avenged. Will South America be the stronger? Will other countries regard us as greater? No. Now get out of this country, lest the wrath of the people tear you apart. There will be law here, not anarchy. Let the authority of the people be the only existing power on earth. Let the name of tyranny be obliterated from the language of the world and ever forgotten. In North America, we fought a war to preserve a union of the states. And South America, too, moved to bury old hatreds. And once again, history was written on top of the Andes, this time in another century and without bloodshed. 13,000 feet above the sea, on the morning of the 13th day of March in the year of our Lord, 1904, there was unveiled the Christ of the Andes, a statue that faced the silence of the hills. Its inscription reads as follows. Sooner shall these mountains crumble to dust than our peoples break the peace which at the feet of Christ the Redeemer they have pledged to maintain. And the peace was kept to this day. The Christ of the Andes was cast in the same bronze, melted down from the border cannon. There's poetry for the world. Well, that's the end of our program. Next week, we're visiting the islands of America. Please tune in, same time, your time, same station. Here was the cast tonight. Edmund O'Brien played Bolivar. Agnes Moorhead was Mrs. Jones. Ray Collins was the adjutant. Ted Reed was the salesman. Barbara Jean Wong was the little girl. Pedro de Cordoba was Atahualpa. Hans Conrad played Pizarro. And Gerald Moore was Mr. Probus, the truck driver. It's very nice to welcome Bernard Herman back to the Mercury. He conducted our music for us, as he usually does. There were two compositions written by distinguished South American musicians. Night in the Andes by Justin Ailey and Il Guarani by Carlos Gomez. And now about Norman Roston. One of the best young American poets we know about is Norman Roston, and he wrote the poetry you heard on this show. I'd like to finish by repeating a few lines. Pizarro, can your dead bones rise? Does any man dare to surpass the height and heroism of a conquistador? Yes. You are far below now, Pizarro. You are tumbled from the sky forever. The democratic man climbs the Andes. And he passes your pinnacles. He shouts across the centuries. This is a presentation of the Columbia Broadcasting System.